Hello everyone, my name is Joel Dunay and I would like to show you my official unofficial solution for the network state exam and now it's the sixth topic about wireless transmission and uh, I would like to say that fuck this topic, fuck this topic in particular because this is shit as hell and we didn't learn about this so the spectrum of the electromagnetic waves the use frequency ranges for wireless communication of course before this you can tell again about the physical layer what they are doing you know the encoding signaling the data that has been transmitted uh, between uh, network devices that can go through cooper media optical wireless until it reaches its destination therefore the physical layer does everything of it and for the spectrum and electromagnetic waves for this first bullet point i will tell exactly the same that i said in the previous video that there are devices that are operating for example in low frequency for example the hard devices that of course would be bad if they would work on high frequency because that would harm hu the human but there are of course network devices that are operating in the ultra high frequency range that's between 300 megahertz to 3000 megahertz and in this range we can see the wireless net the wireless devices bluetooth zigbee for example the signals and noise in vlans the role and type of antennas so i'm starting with the antennas because here we can mix a lot of stuff so basically how these antennas are working let's uh, imagine let's imagine that uh, we everyone knows a single rod that's on the top of the house for the tvs so how these are how, not how that but for example how simple radio or how that can work so imagine that there are two rods and uh, the current flows to this direction and the current flows to that direction so what's going to happen they will uh, cancel each other out because these rods are too close to each other so we have to somehow manage this so in order to do this imagine this we extend the rod I mean not extend but see the full part of it so the current will flow to this direction and the current will flow to this direction so the current flows to this direction in a plane and because this uh, direction we can say that there will be let's donate it with purple nope let's start with this there will be radiation electromagnetic radiation in case of uh, or as uh, radio signals and this is how the antennas are working so here simply the current flows and they, to, they will cause these uh, signals and uh, this is a transmitter the receiver almost works exactly the same for example i i use uh, this blue if uh, the signal that it will receive for example will come here and the signal will go down here and can immediately used or for example used here an amplifier and from the amplifier it can be passed down the other elements or devices so basically we are creating uh, something like this for to act as a transmitter and we have uh, this will be nice and exactly same that will be the receiver this is the receiver and of course everyone knows that the electrons will wiggle back and forth between them and that's how the signals will be created i mean that's how there will be signals between them so this is the base of the antennas i believe and of course here you can talk about frequency modulation and amplitude Oh, mod modulation as well like the amplitude of modulation is the 
for example, AM radios where we have, I, I, I'm going to show you. So for example, let's say that this is an AM signal. I mean, not this, but this will be this example. So how does it look like that this will not be noise? So the AM radios are constantly sending out a signal. So that will be this. And uh, they will put a carrier signal onto this. The car with the carrier signal, it will be a nicer. I mean, not on my picture, but this will be a nicer. And uh, what's going to happen when this started to be transmitted, then this will be something like this. It's starting to be bigger than smaller. So basically, that's why it's called amplitude modulation because of course the amplitude is the y-axis. So we are simply increasing it or decreasing it. And uh, how does it simply work? Imagine that uh, this box is uh, a radio receiver and uh, it will receive these signals. And simply when you tune your radio then you will simply tune its amplitude to select a f a f an amplitude according to this so that's how we are selecting their channel of course the problem with this is that there there can be distortion in the signal so for example this is the maximum uh, height and for example if comes the here a wave and when this wave will reach the radio then there will be some distortion so there will be for example no music for one or two seconds in the radio so this is the amplitude modulation when we are using uh, the when we are mo manipulating the y-axis and I I'm not going to draw this uh, down this uh, accurately but the frequency is exactly the same but there we are manipulating the x-axis and there we are not uh, having this uh, bigger and bigger, for example, or smaller. There we are just simply either it will be shorter, I mean closer, smaller loops or bigger loops. And the advantage of the FM radio is that an FM radio would not care about this, whether there is a bigger loop in it, because it does not care the, it does not uh, depends on the y-axis it just simply depends on the x-axis so the fm will give a better solution but the length or of the wave of the am is much uh, longer than uh, the fm ones so basically what from this you can say that the fm is good because that provides a more reliable channel but for example the fm signal cannot go through the uh, building for example but the am signal can go even on the cur curvature of the earth and it has other approaches as well so what uh, as we have here okay so the types of antennas uh, and now I taught how the receiver and transmitter works. So for example, imagine a TV antenna that everyone knows because in almost all the movies, there is an example about this, that when they sending a guy to change the angle of the rod on the top of the house. So for example, that's called a deep pole antenna. And uh, how does it work? So basically antennas are having three key properties and uh, one of it is the bandwidth, the gain, and the direction. Of course, these are direction antennas because they will receive the signal in a desired angle. So that's why they're always trying to move uh, the rod in the movies. And uh, the, the gain is quite important because even your... Uh, TV at home could uh, can 
get signals so you can get uh, widow or quality the poor quality widow that's the important and the gain is simply an attribute or property that will define that how much it can increase the poor quality by default of course it will not give a best uh, or a extremely good quality without an antenna and the last one is the bandwidth which is quite easy the bandwidth means the signal range that the antenna can receive okay so the signals and noise in vlans here for example we talked about now radios we talked about uh, tvs and for example if we consider wireless transmission the signals and noise for example everyone knows that in open environment where for example there are only trees no buildings the wireless uh, transmission is extremely good because it will not uh, have any hard time to send their signals to elsewhere to anywhere and uh, of course here you can come up with the example that uh, a simple wall can be a noise or yeah it can be a noise for wireless wi-fi transmission because of course we know that they are reducing the signals signal strength and uh, of course there are other devices uh, that can uh, change or that can cause noise and i believe there are some examples at netacod okay one more at the types of antennas that uh, let's delete it and uh, let's say that this is a transmitter this is a receiver and it's important that uh, the signals can go in a straight line they can go up and they can go down so what does it mean the straight line is the quite simple one well where for example light goes so so in this case the signal goes totally in a straight line for example fm and the other two is for example am radios because this one the upper one is the typical that uh, everyone's seen in movies where there are a lot of radio stations that are only working at night and because they are using signals in a way that they shoot the signals up to the ionosphere and from the ionosphere it will be reflected back therefore it can be tunable from a lot of distances from a high or far far distances and uh, that's why it's good and of course why they are not using it at daylight because the signals wouldn't get to the ionosphere because it would be absorbed before it re it could reach it and the other as i said is they are possible to go on the curvature of the earth i believe that's all about uh, this wireless devices topologies connection types and technologies I don't know what they want here. For topologies, I would say that uh, we have the simple, uh, for example, Wi Fi, where, for example, what you can uh, get at any McDonald's, for example, because there anyone can connect to it. So I believe it's a one to many connection, and I would say it's a public. There is, for example, the Bluetooth, which I would say it's a one to one connection, and, it, and that creates a private private uh, network and uh, so I believe that's a one-to-one -one connection and that can be a topology and I believe Zigbee I mean I believe I know that Zigbee is using a master slave approach and uh, that can be another topology I believe the connection types I don't know what they want here of course here you can tell that we can have half flex and duplex connections and for example the half flex means that uh, several units are connecting uh, several connects are con several connect several units are connected and if a unit would like to communicate on the channel then the first the unit should check whether there is a communication on the channel in order to not cause any collision and of course uh, if it's four duplex that means that uh, simultaneously 
multiple units can communicate on the channel. Communication in wireless LAN, I don't know what does it mean, I mean what they want here. Authentication and connection establishment, I don't neither hear what they want. Authentication, of course, here you can come up with the simple example that, like I said, at McDonald's they are free or they are just would like to get an email. And for example, at home you can create, of course, a private for which you can add a password. And I believe nowadays you can do with a, with a token approach as well. The connection establishment, here it's important that multiple, as I said, multiple unit devices can connect to the channel, to, the, to a wireless uh, channel. And that means uh, they share the same bandwidth. Therefore, for example, if the bandwidth is not too much and 100 devices are connected, then it's, that will reserve the whole bandwidth and that will cause slow, that will cause that the network will be slow. So I believe that's all about the sixth topic. I know that there were some fuzzy or shitty stuff here because we didn't learn about this. So I believe it's enough to talk about that much about this. And again, if I said something wrong, then I don't really care. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel.